Also in the street plan of Washington, you find pentagrams. So here we have two pentagrams in the uh, street plan of Washington. The top one points into the Capitol building, and the one at the bottom points into the White House. This is a political building, so we're told. In fact, it's a temple to a secret society, built by the Freemasons to a specific design, Congress the Congress building. Where did it get its name from? Capitol Hill. From a sacred place of the uh, Roman Brotherhood going way back called Capitoline Hill. And when Madeleine Albright, uh, high priestess of this uh, Brotherhood, uh, became Secretary of State and she went across on her first overseas visit to Europe, she actually went to Rome and made an official visit. Uh, what for her would have been a pilgrimage to Capitoline Hill in Rome and that's where we get Capitol Hill from. This is George Washington. Um, in the last century, they decided they didn't have a decent statue of George, so instead of getting an American to, to produce one, they ordered it from Italy, from Florence. And when it arrived on the dockside, uh, people were staggered, because here was George, the first president of the United States, depicted um, naked uh, from the waist up with this um, cloth over his Bill Clinton's and then pointing up one arm, pointing down the other. What's going on? Unless you realize where these people are coming from, it's inexplicable. Well, if you just hold that in your mind, arm up, arm down, naked from the waist up, and then uh, Bill Clinton's covered in a piece of cloth, well, this is where it's coming from. This is the ancient depiction of the compilation of the negative force symbol that the Templars uh, worshipped, or the high-level uh, Templars worshipped anyway, um, called Baphomet. And this is why that they depicted um, uh, George Washington in that way. come to light is that it's now been it's sort of it's it, it is not so surprising for a lot of people that there are covens amongst the very educated class architects doctors lawyers priests um brokers um and the leisure class these are people who have made pacts with the devil that's right they, they are it's really to the best, the more accurate way of describing would be that they have indulged themselves in the worship of the goat, of the prince, of the serpent, of Satan, of Lucifer, and uh, they lead perfectly, uh, they lead perfectly normal lives. They're jewel merchants. They travel. They're, they're prominent in their own way, but they do have this indulgence. Father, here's a part of that I can never understand. Mm -hmm that has never made sense to me and that is if somebody were to make um a pact with the devil mm -hmm. uh, then obviously the the implication is if if the devil is there to make a pact with them to make a deal to make their life uh their short mortal life on earth pleasurable um yeah. with, with money or women or travel or more or, interesting or more interesting or more interesting whatever it is they want Yes. Then they are aware of the presence of the devil, and they are obviously aware then oh, yeah. um, of the presence of God as well. And they uh, nevertheless make a conscious, stupid, short-term, blind choice to take what they can get in this lifetime. And I, I just, it, it, to embrace one, you must embrace the other. It's not like it's some wishy-washy prison. I, I know, I know, I know you do. There's, it is a very... Uh, not easy to understand, except when you talk with them, when they let their hair down and peel grapes, as we say, and when they're, they're on their way to being cured of what they or healed is the proper word, you find that there's an exhilaration and a satisfaction 
which is both sensual and sexual and mental, when they really indulge in, in Luciferian worship, there is a, a peculiar exhilaration. Like a drug, then? Yes. Yes, it's a peculiar exhilaration. And, of course, the, the, the godly instincts in us all, the angelic in us all, because we all have something angelic and something godly, besides everything else, uh, a lot of other negative things, uh, that is quenched. And um, uh, you find in them a horror, a, a horror of anything, what we call sacred and holy or sacrosanct. Or the idea of the, the the idea of the of the of the sacred of the awesome. How in the world did you ever get involved in praying to demon spirits? A, a fellow that, that had been on a particular ship with me, he told me, Hey, I got something fantastic to tell you. He said, I am affiliated with people that speak with the spirits of the dead. How would you like to talk to this, the, the spirit of your dead mother? And I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked. He said, you wouldn't be uh, afraid of talking to, to the spirit of your dead mother, would you? Well, I said, I'll tell you what, I would have to give that some thought. That's something I never thought about before in my life. Most of us probably haven't, a little afraid of something like that. Well, he says, you know, you know it's written all over your face. You're afraid of, of going to a seance. But he says, I know you, he says, you're going to come. <laughs> 